what the best story that we could, would, could find was that back in the early 70s when they were building that dam, the owners of the property here knew that there were some historical plaques up there that were going to be inundated once the dam was completed and the lake was, was finished. And whether that person or those people actually gathered the plaques up or simply copied down what was written on them, we do not know. But we do know that they took and engraved each of the, the wording of each of those plaques under granite and then put them into a short obelisk over here in front of the ranch headquarters. It stands about that tall. Some of you guys went over and saw it yesterday, the day before. And so what I thought would be more interesting uh, would be because you cannot go and see those if you're a regular person driving by you can't go into the ranch area to see it because it's private property now if, if you knew who to talk to they'd be happy to let you in but most people driving by don't have that kind of time so I figured it would be a good idea to bring the wording out here where everybody could stop and see it and save a pretty safe place along the highway and so we've written here the wording of the the wording of the four plaques is in, engraved on our monument here um, the first one deals with the uh, what eventually became most of what we call the Mojave Road, the ancient Indian trail from the Colorado River all the way to the Pacific Coast. Mojave Indians and others would come along that trail and they'd come right through this area on the way to the, the see the coastal Indians and trade for beads and shells and all that kind of stuff, stuff that they valued. And that trail, which with some, mod with some changes later became the Mojave Road, ran right through this area. In fact, it came right up through here and up through over, over uh, through Saw Pit Canyon and down the other side to what I think it's called, uh, what'd you call it, Dave? Cable or Devil's Canyon? Cable. Cable Canyon, down the other side and then down into the San Bernardino Valley and then finally out to the, out to the ocean. So that was used for, for centuries. And it was that trail that in 1776, Father Garces, who was an, I've, I've got his, the second half of his diary. It's just absolutely amazing. Father Garces was the missionary to the Indians in the Southwest. And he had a great deal of respect. Say again? The indefatigable. The indefatigable. Thank you. And you teach English too, yeah. Oh, no, I don't teach that. Just, just as correct. <laughs> and uh, it was he who came through here in 1776 on his way to the Mission San Gabriel. He was he came up the Colorado River, ended up at the Mojave Villages. They supplied him with a couple of guides to take him over, over the trail. Uh, came right through here, over Saw Pit Canyon and down into, San Ga into San Bernardino Valley and then off to the San Gabriel Mission. And you know it's interesting because there's a fella here who looks just like Father Garces. <laughs> That's a, that's a reference to back on my trash trek in 2016, I had uh, I asked Warthog here to play the part of Father Garces, and we had a, a monk's robe and everything, and he gave a really good accounting back in uh, Landfair Valley. And uh, again, thank you for that. Thank and that started a kind of a tradition now, because now Dave's got to do it for every trash trek for different <laughs> characters, but he does a great job of it. Um, so the first plaque commemorates that, the ancient Indian trail. Uh, then the second one, um, deals with a place, uh, a, an Indian village. Um, some books will give you the wrong name, but it's the Venume Indians at a village here called Wapayabit. My understanding is, is that we were camped just a few hundred yards from the location of that village. And that village had been here for many centuries, one of several. Uh, on account of the location, you have excellent access to water. The west <coughs> branch of the Mojave River is right here, so they have plenty of water year-round. They have access to the mountains. Uh, when it gets got too hot in the summer, they could migrate up to the mountains. They could also, also go to the oak groves up there and gather acorns for the coming winter, so they had a, a good supply of food. And, um, and then they're right here along the, the Mojave the Mojave Trail, the Indian Trail, so they could trade with the Mojave Indians coming in on their way to the coast. And a lot of trading was done here and at the other villages as you go downstream. It's kind of weird to think of that way being downstream because these are the headwaters. This is the west branch of the, Mo of the Mo uh, Mojave River. The east branch is farther over. You can si kind of see the ridge come down over here where Deep Creek is. The east branch is there and then they, the confluence is by the uh, flood control dam further down the valley and then you have the Mojave River and of course you need water so the villages were set up all the way down to Lane's Crossing a little bit further. Lane's Crossing you might remember we put a plaque up there in 2014. 
The third plaque relates troubles between cowboys and local Indians. By the late 1850s, this Los Flores ranch area had be already become a going concern because it's got such excellent pasture land. And by 1866, um, there were uh, a number of ranchers already up here, including a guy named Ed Parrish. Uh, they were already running cattle up here and had been doing so for about six years when they decided that uh, as a, uh, a large group, the cattle interests were gonna take their herds and head them up the road, eventually ending up in Montana. They were gonna sell them up in Montana. And while, in, in March of 1866, while they were gathering the, uh, the herd up here, they, were, they had a number of cowboys trying to get the, the cows out of the thickets. The herd was gathered here by the ranch headquarters and uh, a couple of gunshots were heard. And unfortunately, uh, three of the, three of the uh, cowboys were killed by the local Indians. Um, eventually, uh, they, the, their partners were absolutely terrified that they were gonna be next. So they huddled into the, into the ranch headquarters there, into the, that, that cabin. And all night long, they're just terrified that they're going to be the next guys. They were not attacked. The next day, we're able to make the, make their way back down to San Bernardino. So that was the third plaque. And the fourth one deals with uh, the county road that came down through Summit Valley from Cajon Pass, uh, passed right through, <laughs> according to the plaque, right through the uh, the grassy lane there in front of the land, ranch headquarters. The one that's the most important to us as members of Billy Holcomb is the one that deals with the Cowboys having trouble with the local Indians. Um, this was the first Billy Holcomb plaque in October of 1969. Remember PBCs are, ex-PBCs, I'm sorry. Our chapter number is what? 1069. Yep. Which means what? October, October of 1969. These guys are all right. This is one of the finest classes of PBCs I've seen today. Liar. They never said that. <laughs> No, good job. Yeah, in October of 1969, Billy Holcomb chapter was officially chartered. This was our charter doings, and that was the the plaque that was that was uh, commem commemorating the uh, the uh, deaths of those of that that incident that led to the deaths of the three cowboys, and the charter. Oh, now here's another one for you. Who was the founding humbug of Billy Holcomb chapter? Elber. Good Elber. job, Elbert Belden. Yeah. Now, Belden. Now, of all of those fellas that were at that charter doings, there's only one who's left alive. Yeah, right. Who is that? Ex Sublime Noble Ground Humbug, Dr. Sid Blumner. You don't have to say sir anymore. Uh, <laughs> wow, they got it. A very own Dr. Sid Blumner. So. I'm gonna ask Sid Original to step member. up, or he can, if you, it's more comfortable for you there, to uh, to give us a, hail us with a few anecdotes of that very day. Good morning, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, this is the 106th Billy Holcomb clamp out, and I've been to 105. Damn. So. Um, um, yeah. I'm really privileged to be here. Uh, I'll give you a little history about how I got to where I got. It'll only take a minute, and then I'll talk to you about what I remember out the clamp out. You know that thing in the, the ritual where they say no one was in any shape to take the minutes? I'm one of those guys. So I can't tell you a whole lot. <laughs> the way I got here into the being the charter member I had just been initiated into Holcomb, pardon me, into Platrix in April. Sorry. <laughs> and I just been initiated into, into Holcomb, uh, Platrix, and I was sitting in a chair, um, drinking uh, some brown liquid, um, <laughs> guy's name, Jack something or other. <laughs> and some guy come by to me and says, where do you live? At that time, I lived in Montclair. I said, well, I live in Montclair. He says, hey, man, we're having a new chapter start in October. Do you want to be a charter member? Hmm. And I said, yes. Hmm. So I am a charter member strictly by luck. And uh, I did not plan anything about the chapter. I do know that what happened was 
Elber Belden was at the LA Press Club in 1968 and convinced the Platrix guys that they should be allowed to have a chapter in San Bernardino and Riverside County. So in October of 69, and it was the first weekend in October, because that's when Platrix traditionally did their doings, we had a joint clamp out. Now I know a lot of you guys have been to charterings, and so this was a chartering, but it's nothing like it is today. There were probably just Platrix and Holcomb guys there. What I remember is we were on a large dirt strip where the lake is now. And I remember being told that this property was going to be under the under Silver Lake and that the campsite would be obliterated. Now, the plaque he's talking about, I never saw and uh, I never knew they had a dedication, but that was not at that time unusual for Platrix. They may have put that plaque up earlier or later, and it was not unusual for the guys that were running Platrix not to tell a whole lot of people. So the first time that I saw the plaque Paul is talking about was on ex Noble Grand Hubbuck, Smitty, Mike Smitty Smith's hemorrhoid trip. And that was the first time I was ever on the Lost Floyd's Ranch. Now, I, I have a different memory than Paul does. I remember a large fountain, and Dave Taylor told me it was there when he took me over to see the barn again. And on that base of that fountain, which is much larger than the fountain is today, I remember, and I'm sober, okay, I remember seeing those plaques that are now on the office. Um, let me just finish with this. So the first Billy Holcomb doings by itself was out by Lake Hammett. There were 30 of us. Right. We had 800 at the 50th. We have over 400 here. I know those other charter members all have a big grin on their face is it look down from the gold medals. Yeah. Thanks for letting me speak. Thanks for allowing me to be who I am. Cool. And in my opinion, the greatest chapter of E-Clampus White. Yeah. Satisfactory. Thank you, Sid. Yeah. Well, that was great. Never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, heck, I don't know how many, how many chapters you're in, Sid, but... It all started there. There's only and one we, that counts. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And we thank you for all your service to our chapter at the Clampers in a special. By the way, on the top of this monument is a challenge coin. And it is a challenge coin for our very own, because we, we claim you as our own, Warthog, because you are... I came through. You, you certainly did. <laughs> you certainly did. In fact, I remember when you came through, because I was a keeper of the PBCs, and you and Sewer Spewer, Steve, came in at the same time down at the river. Yep. And one of the things I liked the best was that they made no pretense of having been in Clampers. They they played the role perfectly, which I, as a keeper, I really appreciated. But on top here is uh, Sublime Noble Grand Humbug Warthog's badge. So you need to make sure to, to check that out because uh, I don't think there's a lot of plaques that has the Sublime's challenge going in it. And we are honored, Ward Hog, to have that. I'm honored. Thank you. That's awesome. Well, I'm uh, going to turn this over to back over to the humbug who has some duties to perform now that he's coming to the very last few minutes of his reign, and he's going to pass that, <laughs> pass it on to the next brother. And so back to you. This was an excellent, excellent clamp out and a beautiful spot. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Humbug.